All right, so this is going to be a video on the martyrs. First, I would like to just address a point. Um, I asked a person, and this was a video where I was responding to somebody saying that Christians support genocide, um, and I said, "No, you, you shouldn't. You should. You should preface that um, because it's not the Orthodox don't, and there's huge, huge number of us, um, and we go the farthest back." And on that very video, this person said, well, you guys are all greedy. And I said, well, wh what greed do we have? And she said, you, you stole land from the Native Americans. The Eastern Orthodox Church, Eastern Orthodox Christians. Actually, we didn't take any land, and we were the only people that uh, <laughs> saw them as equals. Um... Do you know anything about St. Herman or Peter the Aleut, who is a patron saint of America, who is an Aleutic Indian? Um, and, I mean, watch the last few videos of how the culture interacted with the Eskimos. It was very easy. We, we ruined none of their traditions. We didn't steal any land. We didn't kill any of them. Um, it was Protestants and Catholics who <laughs> did that. The exact people who I speak against. And they were using manifest destiny. So if a Christian does something, not in the name of Christianity, that's against Christianity, but not even that, they're a different religion than us. We don't believe what they believe. They're a totally different religion. We're closer to Islam in many ways, and we're closer to, actually, we're closest to Taoism and Confucianism um, than we are to at least the forms that existed back then. Um, the Spanish actually conquered the Orthodox Native Americans and started torturing them. That's Peter the Aleut. That's what I'm talking about. That's why this is going to be on martyrs. So that's the beginning. That's I start off that way. Okay. Um, well, I will get to Peter the Aleut, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's kind of funny. So that means I can blame you for, or I can say, I can accuse you of things that communists did because they were atheists too, right? Even though you may vehement, vehemently disagree with them, and in our view basically call them heretics like we call the, you know, the Catholics and the, or at least heterodox, the Catholics and the uh, pro Protestants, um, but you have to take accountability for 120 million deaths just inside the 20th century. Great double standard you're setting up there. If you disagree with this, then it is a double standard, or else you have you have more deaths in one century than probably the Catholic Church in all of its history. And we're not Roman Catholic; never were. Uh, proceeding on. Somebody mentioned John the Baptist, that I should speak about John the Baptist in this. Um, and again, I'll do a series, but I'll mention the, the saints. One saint might take up a full video, but John the Baptist was going to get killed because he was an insurrectionist. That's how they saw him. They saw him as an insurrectionist. Uh, whether you believe the story where a girl danced for his head or that we need to kill this guy. Um, he was going. I think he was going to be killed anyways. So was he standing up for the faith? Was he a martyr? He died a believer by the hands of the unbelievers. He was a messenger. Okay, martyr. Uh, I think sometimes he's marked as the last Old Testament character. Um, the New Testament we have recorded as St. Stephen. Um, and he would not relent. He, he actually, when he was being killed, saw, saw Christ. So, the heavens were opening before him. Nobody else could see it. He was he was stoned to death, and he was stoned to death by somebody who had become a great leader and who wrote most of the New Testament. Um, Paul, or at least Paul, was consenting. Paul was uh, the great source of martyrs in in the first century. Some we don't even have their names. Um, so Saint Stephen, I think, is is the foundational root. I use the, the I mean, you can see the switch from the old to the new with. Um, with John the Baptist and Saint Stephen, because Saint Stephen could have said, "Oh, I'm a good Jew. I, you know, you know, deny," but he didn't. He, he set the example. 
um, there's money for, well, we can say Christ through moral influence on the cross set the example that that's, but we're talking about human martyrs here. Um, <coughs> and then <clears throat> let's jump way ahead, and I will go back and go through the time of the martyrs in Rome. I mean, well, there's a great, I have to mention Ignatius of Antioch. Ignatius of Antioch was taken captive and uh, by the Romans and was going to be thrown into the lions. This is where people confuse, oh, the Colosseum, where the Christians were persecuted with Christians being thrown into the lions. They say the Christians were thrown into the lions in Colosseum. We know they were thrown into wild beasts, lions, probably, but there's actually no, I don't think there's any record of that. In my knowledge, there's not record of that. But Ignatius of Antioch was thrown into the lions, and as we know, there was... Up until the time of Muhammad, there was lions in Italy, and um, and they were of the strain of the African lion, but they were just a little bit different. But they were the size and the ferocity. Uh, Saudi Arabian Peninsula, Jerusalem, Iraq, all that place, lions were there. Um, <coughs> so, um, he, the church, actually gathered up enough money for his ransom because you could. That's that could happen. You can pay to release somebody. All right, we're going to give you the money. You release him. And they came with the money. Uh, and he says, I'm confessing Christ. You're, you're not going to pay my way out. You're not going to buy my way out of this. You're going to go and give that money to the poor. Uh, that money doesn't need to be handed over to the wicked. Um, and he was thrown to the lions and his martyrdom is recorded. Uh, and if you read the things that he wrote, and even if because I believe either 1, 3, or 7 is what he wrote. Um, I know there's pretty much, I mean, there's the ones that we have recorded. If you go on early Christian writings, they have a lot of them. But then what we see coming out of Rome and the things that appear very late, um, I don't know if we can attribute to him. Uh, I'd say we, we can't. But if you read what he says, and it, like even when he talks about the Old and New Testament, he says, Old Testament, good, New Testament, better. So it's not an equal footing like that. Uh, I mean, he, he, he totally destroys uh, James White. <laughs> all the Bible's equal, and you have to use all of it to figure out all of it. It's not systematic. The Bible is not systematic. I think that's a great thing that he shows us, and uh, he tells us about a lot of stuff. It's, it's actually very good. He's the first first earliest writer outside of the New Testament, Ignatius of Antioch. Um, and he may have been writing stuff before many of the things in the New Testament were written. I think we only put that so late because uh, because we think we already have a preconceived timeline of things where it's probably earlier than we think. Um, he's also traditionally believed that the child in Christ's hands where he picks it up and says, you know, as of one of these, you shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, Suffer not the children to come to me. That 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 was Ignatius of Antioch in his arms. Uh, <coughs> but I want to go to Peter the Aleut again. Um, Peter the Aleut was captured by the Spanish because the the Orthodox sank a lot of martyrs, and I mean there was no conquistadors. There was no soldiers coming over. It was it was monks coming over, and they weren't they weren't kidnapping children like the Spanish would do to like make them Catholic, or uh, they would uh, set up a monastery. And pray, and pray for the conversion of the people. Go out, meet the people, bless them, and go back to the monastery. Uh, and there were various bands of, of, uh, of, I mean, you know, if they were nice to one people, they were going to get killed by another, because they figured, well, you know, what are these people doing? Uh, and it took a lot of blood to be put in Alaska. And there was no, no weapons, no guns, no force. Um, but there were people who were coming to this, and it was because orthodoxy does not destroy a previous culture. It incorporates a thing. You'll see totem poles and stuff like this. And to this day, uh, Alaska has a very rich orthodox background. Well, Peter the Aleut, um, uh, people will mistake it with Eskimo. You'll know it as an Eskimo. You're going to get a conf most Americans are going to get in, just call them Eskimos. Um, but uh, you know, and he, he does. I mean, it's if you saw an Aleutic Indian, you'd say Eskimo because they dress the same. I mean, but it's two different groups. Um, it's like trying to distinguish between Russian and Ukrainian. I mean, we just call them Russians in America. It's funny. It's it's ignorant, but it's funny. Um, 
well, it's ignorant, but it's the truth. I shouldn't say funny. Um, the Spanish captured him because you know the, uh, they, I believe it's called the Barbary Coast. The Spanish California, they 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 went up there trying, you know, and they. Uh, it's kind of where the uh, Alaskan natives met the other ones, and the Spanish employed the uh, natives, I believe, of California, Oregon, or something like that, to torture him to convert to Catholicism. Because they said, "You've got to become a Catholic. You got to be believe in Christ." And he says, "I already do." Uh, he didn't need to bow to any of their dogmas or pope or anything. He, and they slowly dismantled his hand. It's it's very similar to if you read what the Algonquins would do to people when they catch them, um, but they they slowly torture him, cut off his hand, and he wouldn't relent. He never gave up. That's why in the in the icons he shows his hand, fully restored. So those are uh, I believe four martyrs. Peace to you, may God save Serbia and Syria.